Well, hello there, my name is John Meyer, and this week I'm gonna explain why I'm switching from a Mac Mini 2018 with an external GPU to the new Mac Mini M1. I am a musician slash composer slash producer who also makes YouTube videos. I live in Pro Tools and Adobe Premiere. And although I dabble in large orchestral templates sometimes, most of my workflow is smaller sessions, so music really isn't the issue. Most com computers can do what I want to do. Now, when it comes to video, that's a different story. These file sizes are huge, and the graphics requirements are much greater. To get into color grading, you really start pressing the machine. So I need a machine that can handle that. And currently with my Mac Mini 2018, it's not up to the task. I've owned all the Macs, and that's not entirely true, but it's close. I started in the late 90s with a G4, and then a G5, then Mac Pro, then I had another Mac Pro, and then iMac, and I've had four or five MacBook Pros over the past 20 years as well. Up until the Mac Mini, I would say they've all been a success, except for possibly the 2013 iMac that had the Fusion Drive, which was a mistake that crashed on me twice. I'm not here to trash the Mac Mini 2018. It's a fine machine. I take most of the blame because I tried to get cute. Early on when it came out, I learned that you could add an external graphics processor, and I never done anything like this, but the Mac Mini 2018, when it came out, it had a terrible graphics processor, and, and that was on purpose. They, they saved money, and it was meant to be used in situations that didn't require intensive graphics processing. When I added up the cost of buying a new Mac Mini, a GPU enclosure, a GPU, and a widescreen curve monitor, which I really wanted at the time, and I'm glad I did because I'm kind of tired of the old iMac look, that price of all those components added up to about the same price of a new iMac. So I went with the 2018 Mac Mini and added 64 gigs of RAM myself. That was a chore. You have to take the entire computer apart to get down to where you can change out the RAM. And I was nervous, but it worked out just fine. I added a Sonnet external GPU enclosure and a Radeon RX 580. That was probably my biggest mistake. I should have gone bigger and better with the card. It's difficult to find information about which cards work best for video editing. There's plenty of information about gaming, but certain cards work better with certain software, and I got tired head and I'd already spent a lot of money, so I just went with a, a manufacturer that I knew. It all worked fine when it worked. I had so many issues keeping the GPU connected to the computer, and when I had to restart the computer, I'd have to unplug the USB-C or Thunderbolt or whatever, plug in an HDMI cable, start it up, and then switch it back out. I'm sure I could have figured out a way to fix this, but it drove me insane. The 2018 was both loud and hot, and very loud and very hot. I record in my control room, and when the fans would kick on, it would be not subtle. And as far as heat, you could probably cook an egg on the thing when I was exporting video. And even normal times, it would just get very, very hot, and sometimes it would get so hot that the computer would simply shut down. After watching the 50th glowing review of the new Apple chip, I decided it was time to take the plunge. So I ordered the M1 with 512 gigs of storage, eh, and I maxed out the RAM at 16 gig. I would have purchased a new iMac if it was available. I've been waiting for it, and it's probably still a year away. I needed to make a decision, and when I looked on eBay at prices for the old Mac Mini and the enclosure and the card, I may be able to get out of my old system, the Intel-based system, and get into this new Mac Mini without spending too much money, although I've said that many times in the past and it never quite works out that way. I'll share my pros and cons here in a minute, but I gotta say, right off the bat, it's been great. Even Premiere and Pro Tools, which are not fully supported, function fine, and I think they're only gonna get better. Now, Pro Tools has never functioned fine for me in 20 years, so I don't expect a lot, but Premiere is running smooth, and for those of you that use Final Cut or Logic, I imagine those are running much better. I opted for a clean install, which is an absolute kick in the shins, but it's working. I've been migrating systems for years, and I thought now would be the time to go ahead and do a clean install. So it's kind of like moving from one house in the same city. You just keep going getting boxes, and it takes forever. But it's working, and each day I realize there's software that I need to install and get the license for. And so far, I haven't had any major issues. I'll start with the pros. It's incredibly quiet, and for recording, that is huge. I was so tired of hearing that fan in my quiet, intimate guitar recordings, and now it's gone. And it also does not get hot at all. Sometimes I wonder if it's even on. I'm, I think I'm most impressed at those two things, the fact that it just sits there, 
and works. Overall, the computer seems pretty snappy. I'm on Big Sur. See, I broke all the rules. New computer that's not supported, new operating system that's not supported, and so far, it's working out. So I'm taking on the risk and the burden to figure this out so that you don't have to. Fortunately, my ancient Apollo 16 interface works with the new machine. Now I have the original Thunderbolt option card, and there's a couple generations of that card. The limitation with mine is that I can't plug anything into that card. With the newer versions, you can plug the interface into the computer, and then out of the interface, you can power a drive or a monitor. And that leads me to the cons. The first con is connectivity. The M1 only has two USB-C ports. I think I should be calling them Thunderbolt 4 ports. I, yeah. Anyway, they're USB-C to me. And the old Mac Mini had four. Now, I did learn that they're on both machines only have two buses. So even though it had four on the old one, there were only two USB buses. So there was the same amount of power on the new machine. And I knew this would be a problem, but I thought I would give it a go anyway, as I realized two days into it that I had to find a solution. So I went with this CalDigit USB dock so I could get more USB-A and USB-C, as well as a display port and SD card reader. I have so many peripherals from uh, keyboards to synthesizers to hard drives. I, I need a lot. And this, even though I didn't want to spend the extra $250, I found it to be quite handy and I can do everything that I need to do. The second con is storage. I only have 512 gigabytes. Now, you can upgrade, but you're spending a lot of money. You're spending more money on the internal hard drive space than you would on external hard drive space. The fastest performance we're going to get is working on that system drive. Although USB-C drives are fast and fast enough for most everything, there are some advantages to working on the drive. So I'm going to experiment with working off of the internal drive for my most current YouTube video and see if it does increase performance. So yes, it'd be great to have a two terabyte drive. And if I thought this was my long-term machine, I probably would have invested in that just because you always end up needing more space. However, with Dropbox cloud services, I'm trying to do my best to not fill up my system drive with things that I don't need. The third con is RAM. And honestly, I don't know if this is really a con yet. They say that 16 gigabytes of RAM performs as well as maybe 32 on the Intel based machines. And I don't know the answer to that. If you are in need of a computer with a lot of RAM for big orchestral templates, then you probably already know this is not the computer for you. But if you're used to uh, machines that maybe aren't as powerful, and I'm used to the workflow of committing tracks, inactivating tracks that I'm not using, so I'm not terribly concerned about this. I'm hoping that when the new iMac rolls around in a year or so, if I decide to go that route, that there'll be higher RAM options. But maybe I won't need that, and maybe over the course of the next few months, I'll figure out that 16 gigabytes is just fine. The fourth and most frustrating con is Bluetooth. I have had so many issues, both on the old Mac Mini and this new Mac Mini, of connecting my keyboard. It stutters, sometimes the mouse drops out. It's really frustrating. I'm not the only one who's dealing with this. And they made some updates, but they still need to make more. Hopefully it is a software issue. But I finally had to plug in a lightning cable to my keyboard so that I could trust that it was going to work all the time. So Bluetooth has been an annoyance that there are workarounds, but it shouldn't be a problem, and it is. I know I listed more cons than pros, but this really is a great machine, and I'm glad that I made the purchase, even though it's not completely supported. I hesitate offering buying advice to you because we all have different needs, but this fits in that sweet spot where it does everything I need to do audio-wise, and it's also a pretty dramatic improvement on the video side of things. Now, I still need to make proxies for some sessions, which is where you create smaller versions of the video to work with and then export the full video. I'm working on this eight track multi-camera and it just made more sense for me to spend the time at the beginning to create lower res files that I could work on. But that's part of my workflow. I'm used to it. Just a little extra work at the beginning. But overall, this has been a success. I think this new Apple integrated chip experiment is gonna be really good for us. I suggest you wait a little bit longer if you need your machine to work perfectly all the time. Wait for these manufacturers to support the software fully. I'm fine with dealing with a few hiccups every now and again. I kept the old Mac mini around because I thought, oh, I'll switch back and forth. I'm not switching back and forth. That's a giant pain. Our computers change every day and to go back. So I I'm in it 
and I will continue to update you in the future on how this is going. I do hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please subscribe, hit the like button, that really helps me out, and I'll talk to you very soon.